Hello everyone. Today's topic is anchor chain piling. Now I'm going to discuss and test some solutions that have been proposed to solve this very common problem. Now for those who are not aware, chain piling problems occur when the anchor is being retrieved, chain falls through the deck and into a chain locker, and the chain piles up so high that it will block further chain from entering. Now, best case scenario, this is just annoying because it requires a crew member to go down below and knock down the chain pile. Indeed, as a youngster, that was one of my duties aboard Panope. She did have a chain piling problem. I've since corrected it. But worst case scenario is maybe the boat is actually dragging to shore and you need to get everything up and into the boat as quickly as possible so you can motor to safely. And maybe you just don't have enough crew. Maybe a crew member needs to be at the helm and the engine controls. And again, just don't have enough manpower to get this job done. So there's great incentive to have the chain enter the locker 100% on its own. Now to help us with this analysis, I've constructed this mocked up anchor locker and we're gonna test several different things. Uh, among them are relocating the entry point of the chain into the locker and those effects. Another is adding a ramp to a, uh, an entry point that is not favorable to deflect the chain to a more favorable location. I'll look at the effects of adding a traffic cone into the center of the locker, and then we'll also look at various different types of chains. We will look at galvanized chain that is very rusty, galvanized chain that is not rusty. We'll look at stainless steel chain that's very, very slippery, and it has a different, different way it uh, piles up. And then also we'll look at uh, uh, going down a size in chain. And what we're going to measure is the amount of chain that can be passed into this locker without blocking. And it's real obvious the chain just piles up and once it gets to the hole it just stops and I just make a measurement. I'm going to do three tests for each of these conditions and we'll look at averages for all of them. And I'm certainly not going to show you all the footage. It's very boring watching chain enter a locker, but I'll show you enough clips so you get the ideas of how these anchors, these anchor roads behave as they enter this mocked up chain locker. Okay, this is Panope's primary anchor road. It is 10-year-old 3-8 triple B galvanized. I'm not a full-time cruiser, but it has gotten a lot of use in anchor testing, and it's been dragged around on the seabed in that sand, so it's fairly polished. It's nice and smooth. I'm not sure how this would compare to brand new galvanizing. Sometimes that comes out of the dip kind of bumpy. But I think it would change pretty quickly into a condition similar to this. So, again, I think this probably represents typical in-service galvanized chain. And here we see it piling up into a nice pyramid. Again, I did three different pulls, uh, all of it in this wet condition. I wet down all the chain just to simulate things as accurately as possible. And what I came up with out of the three uh, deployments here was an average of 88 feet is 88 feet went into the locker prior to it becoming blocked. Here's that same 3 8 triple B galvanized coming through a hole or penetration in the deck that is off to the starboard side there. So it gives the chain an opportunity to just sort of lay against the hull and climb right on up. And the average of the three attempts with this condition only resulted in 40 feet of chain. So less than half of the chain could enter uh, as compared to that first center, center of the area hole. And here's that same 3 8 chain going through the same starboard hole, but this time using a ramp. That's just a piece of plastic pipe, and uh, it, it doesn't want to self-start, and if there's any rope in the road, that won't self-feed either. But once the chain gets going, it feeds nicely. The idea is that it puts the chain pile out into the middle of the space, but unfortunately that comes at the cost of losing several inches of height. So the question is, is does it uh, make up for that and end up with a net gain? And the answer is... Just barely. I mean, really, not much to speak of. For, for these three tries, it averaged 
41 and if you remember without the ramp it was 40 feet so really not really worth bothering with for this particular chain you'll find some of these other chains that are perhaps more or less slippery might have a little bit better result you'll see shortly but in my view this this ramp is probably not worth the trouble at least for this shaped anchor locker Here's another entry point. It's on center line, but far forward in the boat, so it's right there in the V, and this is the worst possible place you could have your chain enter because there's just no place for the chain to fall. Can't fall forward, can't fall port, can't fall starboard. Uh, out of the three tries here, averaged together, it was only 25 feet. Uh, again, it was 40 feet for the uh, so hole that was off to the side and 88 feet for the uh, aft center line or most favorable hole. So now we've moved back to that most favorable location right in the center of the locker, but we've added a traffic cone dead center under the hole. And the theory is that the cone will spread out the base of the chain pile, thus having more volume uh, for chain. The problem is the cone itself takes up some volume. So the, the question will be, does the, uh, does the improvement in the base volume uh, does it counteract the loss of volume of the cone? And the answer is, at least in this situation, no, it does not. In fact, the total of the, or the average of the three tries in this cone condition was 71 feet. And if you remember, the average without the cone was 88 feet. So for this situation, it's a significant reduction in the amount of chain. Um, I've never used this technique before, but I've read numerous testimonials from credible people who claim that this does work and does add add capacity. Um, maybe it's a factor of this particular chain locker shape being quite narrow, or maybe there is something else in the technique that I'm doing wrong. But again, for this situation, it is a reduction in chain capability. So if we assume that you have optimized your chain locker space and deck penetrations into the most favorable location possible, then it is time to consider changing anchor chain. And what we're testing here is smaller. This is 5 16th G4 chain that compares favorably strength-wise to that larger 3 8 triple B. And indeed, it does allow more chain to pass through. How much? It was 120 feet. That was the average for three tries. 120 feet, whereas the 3 8 was 88 feet. So that's a pretty significant boost. Here's that same penetration with the traffic cone added, and there was no improvement. The average for the three tries was 117 versus 120 with no cone. Here's that same 5 16 chain in the starboard side deck penetration. Uh, the average was 51 feet, and here it is in the same location with the ramp. Did a little better. It was 54 and then la last spot for this chain, we'll look in the forward center line position. 49 feet was the average, 49. This next chain is back up to the 3 8 inch size. This is stainless steel Chromox chain from Germany, and it is the good stuff. I don't even want to say how much it costs. So the big question is, is will the slipperiness of this chain remain the same after it has been used somewhat? And I really don't have data. I think I can just safely say that as long as it's not visibly rusted, it'll stay better than galvanized chain. So the numbers were, as a 142-foot average that would fit through this most favorable hole, uh, the same hole with the 3 8 galvanized was 88 feet, so the, the stainless is almost twice as good. Uh, it's even better than the smaller 5 16 galvanized, which was only 120 feet. So all in all, yes, there's definitely some improvements to be had by switching to stainless steel chain. Adding the traffic cone had a similar result to the galvanized chains in that it reduced the amount of chain that could be placed in the locker. Uh, it averaged 121 feet with the cone and again it was 142 without. Here in the starboard side deck penetration the stainless steel chain did 80 feet average. Uh, that was exactly twice as much as the 3 8 galvanized, which was 40 feet. And when using the ramp in that same starboard penetration, there was actually a significant improvement. The average was 100 feet as opposed to 80 feet without the ramp. So again, for in this situation with this slippery stainless steel chain, I'd say the ramp is earning its keep. 
And for the forwardmost center line penetration, the stainless chain was more than twice as good as the galvanized. Uh, the average for the stainless was 66 feet, and the galvanized was only 25. And we can see here, this really does give a good image of how well this stuff sort of slides over itself. We see multiple big chain knockdowns all on its own. Okay, the last chain that I will show you is some very heavily rusted 3 8 triple B that I had kicking around the shop. Only had 50 feet, so I can't give you any results in the most favorable location. But up forward, it was only 21 foot average. I remember the stainless 3 8 was 66, which is uh, more than three times as good. Here in the starboard side position, the total was 26 feet, and with the ramp installed, a little bit of help, average was 31. Here's a quick peek at the data that I collected during these tests. I won't speak any more about the percentages or changes, but if you want to crunch these numbers further, pause the video or take a screenshot and calculate to your heart's content. Earlier in this video, I mentioned that my boat, Panope, used to have a chain piling problem. And to help understand what was going on, take a look at this photo that I took back in 1989 in the Sea of Cortez. We see that the boat used to have a traditional centerline bowsprit. And because the staysail had a boom, that meant that the windlass could not be mounted atop of that bowsprit and more on centerline. So instead, my father mounted it off to the starboard side, and that placed the chain penetration through the deck quite close to the hull. And indeed, even with just 100 feet of 3 8 triple B chain, that's what we used to have, uh, it would just climb up the side of the hull, just like in these tests that we saw, and had to be knocked down every single time. So if we fast forward 25 years, I was at the tail end of a massive modification and refit of this vessel, and among the major changes was the complete stripping of all hardware from the foredeck. I ground off the double Samson post, got rid of the centerline bowsprit, and in its place I created an uber-strong bow roller there at the top of the screen. And then pertinent to this conversation, the windlass was moved aft about a foot and a half, and inboard right on centerline, and that put the chain penetration just a few inches to starboard of centerline. Looking down below, we see the new aluminum chain locker that I welded into place. There's 160 feet of chain already in the space during this photo, and there's room for perhaps another 100, maybe another 150 feet. If you look at the top of the screen beyond where the chain is penetrating through the deck, you'll see some discolored, sort of rust-colored foam. That's the location where the old chain used to come through, and you can just imagine that chain piling up and creeping up the side of the hull and causing the problem. Last thing we'll talk about are those two laundry hampers. Those contain the rope portions of my anchor roads. And in addition to keeping the rope nice and clean and not quite as smelly, it obviously leaves more room for the chain and you will lessen your anchor chain piling problems. Now, this only works if you have enough chain to deal with, say, 95% of your anchoring needs because flaking the rope back into the laundry hampers is time-consuming. And if you had to do that on every anchor deployment, I think you'd become tired of that very quickly. Okay, here's a quick recap of what we found based on averaging all of the data. So if you have a situation where you're off to the side like this in this starboard side location and you switch to a more central location, that's going to gain you 2.4 times as much chain before it piles up and stops flowing in. If you have a center line location up here and moved into a more favorable, that gets you just under three times more chain. So big, big changes or big improvements can be had simply by moving your chain entry point just a small amount. These are about a foot each. If you do have a side location and you want to add a ramp to improve the situation, well, it's not going to gain you much. Uh, for all these tests, it was only a 16% improvement. Uh, if you think a cone might help you, well, it better be a different style chain locker than this, because for this quite narrow chain locker at the bottom, that actually resulted in a loss. It was only 88% uh, as much chain as without the cone. If you have heavily rusted galvanized chain and you switch to newer galvanized chain, that's going to gain you about 40%. And if you go from 
non-rusted galvanized chain to non-rusted 5 16 chain. I should say if you started with 3 8 non-rusted galvanized and you go down to 5 16 that's going to gain you another 40%. And then if you switch from 3 8 galvanized chain to the same size stainless steel chain, that gets you just under double. It was 1.9 times as much chain before it blocked. And if we look at the situation that has the greatest difference, that would be the heavily rusted chain in the forward location, and compare it to the stainless chain in the most favorable location, that gains you just under seven times as much chain capacity before you have a chain piling problem. Okay, that's all for now. Big thanks for those of you who are watching, and an even bigger one to the folks who have donated. Really helps keeps these anchor tests coming. Stay tuned, there'll be more in the future. As always, anchor safely. So long.